Amazon went public back in 1997. If you have invested just $100 in Amazon back then, you would have made almost $1.3 million. Let's say you would have been a bit more generous and invested $100,000. Your net worth today would be $129 million. Unfortunately, you missed that opportunity. But you shouldn't be sad, because in the middle of so many worthless online companies that were launched in the 1990s, it was extremely difficult to predict that Amazon will be the one that will cross a trillion dollar valuation 20 years later. However, we are now in the middle of another great opportunity. Even if you do not have $100,000, you can make a difference by investing as little as $1,000. So let's start with the first one. Pick up two or three stocks. I know that many of you would point fingers at me and say that you need much more than that to earn a reasonable amount out of the stock market, and I totally agree with you, but I want you to look at it from a different angle. In the last 12 years, the stock market has only been growing. If you take a look at any well-established company, you will realize that their stock has been going upward, but due to the unforeseen pandemic, everything is down. But we all perfectly know that sooner or later the pandemic is going to be over and life will get back to normal, at least to a certain extent. Companies like Apple and Coca-Cola and few others are so great that the risk they would go broke is so shallow because they sell products that people either need or strongly desire. And they are perfect at doing that. But right now their stocks are sold at a huge discount, like 30 to 40%. And if we are going to a recession, then you can expect a further drop. So it's a perfect opportunity to double your thousand dollars or even triple in a very short period of time. Take an example of Adobe. It was down by 20%, but since they create products that we all need, the stock price has almost completely recovered. Whoever has invested at that time already made a huge profit in just a few months. Don't choose many companies. 2 to 3 would be a perfect choice. You can of course bet on some of the riskier companies such as airlines that have suffered more or automakers. But remember, if you are going to take a bigger risk, you should be willing to lose that money in case if things go south. My next choice is gold. Before you throw at me your angry comments, you told us not to invest in gold in a previous video. Why are you telling us to invest in gold now? Let me make my case. Gold is of course not a great investment, and it's quite useless in many cases. I'm not denying the fact that it has some purpose, but so does iron and many other metals. But it does not produce anything, it just sits there in the corner and shines. It might make you feel good when you look at it, but that's about it. Gold's most important role throughout history has been preserving wealth. The future is unpredictable. Financial crises, wars, instabilities happen all around the world. But the faith in gold never fades away. Yes, of course, sometimes it's high, other times it's slow, but it's always there in some form. In fact, when there was a gold standard, inflation was literally at 0%. But why gold is a good investment now? During good times when the economy is doing fine, companies are growing, GDP is hitting high records, so gold prices do not rise that much, they rise together with the rate of inflation. Investing in gold would be a horrible choice when you have an opportunity to invest in the stock market and double or triple your rate of return. However, when there is chaos and instability, People are afraid, their primary concern isn't to make more money, even though it's a golden opportunity, but not to lose the money they already have, and they would do everything to preserve it. So when they see that the stock market is doing terrible, often people move their wealth to gold, because they know that gold will always keep its value. That's why during any instability, gold prices soar. In the last 6 months since this pandemic has started, gold prices rose from 1450 to 1700 and if this crisis keeps going, gold prices will keep rising. But here is the problem. Sooner or later, the crisis will be gone and people's confidence in the stock market will be back. So more and more people will invest in the stock market and less and less in gold, which means that gold prices will fall.
That's why you have to exit the market at the right time before gold prices will collapse. When is that going to happen? Well, that's your job to figure out. Start a low-cost business Back in the 1990s, when the internet was getting popular, some of the greatest companies emerged. Google, eBay, PayPal, and a dozen more. People literally made billions of dollars. Mark Cuban made an online radio and sold it to Yahoo for over $4 billion. And I believe right now we have a similar opportunity. Maybe not as big as the dot-com bubble, but essential nonetheless. Because suddenly we all have to stay at home. But businesses cannot afford that. They have to find a way to keep making money. So if you're a developer or passionate about that, right now with as little as a few hundred dollars or even a thousand, you can build up something simple but helpful. Maybe an app that will help us to stay connected while we are stuck at home. Since gyms are closed and a lot of people would avoid going to the gym until a vaccine will be available, an app that will help you to more effectively work out at home would be a great idea. For God's sake, if you actively work out, you can start recording videos on how to work out at home. Since I stopped going to the gym, all I do is google and watch YouTube videos on the best home workouts for chest, biceps, shoulders, legs and so on. I don't want to lose all my gains due to this virus, and I am sure there are plenty of other people like me as well. Or even if you do not have any valuable skills, spend a few hundred dollars to learn one as soon as possible. Such as online or social media marketing, spend another few hundred dollars to test your knowledge, and confront any business that is stuck in this crisis, they are all desperate to find a way to keep the business running. Colleges and universities were one of the first places that were closed down, and they will try to go online as much as possible. Sounds like a perfect opportunity to teach online. There are literally an endless number of opportunities. Do not jump into all of them, you just have a thousand dollars. Pick up one and go all in. Of course, there is a chance that it might not work out, but if you make it happen, returns are incredibly high. Next. Cover your high interest debts. Credit cards are great. I believe everyone should use them responsibly. And I want to underline responsibly. Because if you wish to be qualified for a mortgage, be trusted by financial institutions to get a loan for your business, you need a good credit score. And to build it, you need to use a credit card. However, quite often people blow it up. And interest rates on credit cards are freaking insane, like 15-20%. You must be financially super irresponsible to pay that much interest. 20% in a thousand dollar debt is 200 bucks. Of course, that doesn't apply to all of your debts. If you have a student loan or a mortgage, it will be wise to pay just enough to keep it going, while invest the rest of the money. But whatever returns you make on your investments, your credit card interest will outweigh them. Especially in the long run, those interest rates will accumulate much faster due to the effect of compound interest. That's why getting rid of such debts should be your first priority. And lastly, give your old self a gift. This is not the best option and I wouldn't choose this option personally. Nonetheless, it might be a good option for some. We've already talked a couple of times about investing in an index fund. But of course, that one grand doesn't seem to make a difference. However, numbers tell us a different story. The returns on the stock market are different every year. Some years it's as high as 10-20%, to 20%, other times it's as low as 5%, barely beating inflation. However, over a long period of time, the average rate of return has been 10%. And with compound interest, that $1,000 turns into $53,000 over 40 years. Of course, 54000 is going to worth much less 40 years from now, but still would be a considerable amount. If you're afraid of taking risks and you literally don't know what to do with that thousand dollars, I think it would be wise if you keep it in an index fund and use it when you retire. Who knows how your life will end up when you're 60 or 70 years old. That $53,000 might be crucial for you. Again, it's not a perfect option but worth considering for some. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment because that will really help the channel. 
And of course, hit the subscribe button if you're new around here. Thanks for watching and until next time.